So you might remember this project I did with the ePaper display where it uses an ESP32 development board to go connect to the CDC's website and pull down the total number of cases for my state. And uh, that was a great project and all, but the problem was that the ESP32 board maintained a Wi-Fi connection all the time and required it to be plugged in. Well, I decided to give this project an upgrade by using a trig board. So now this can be battery powered and last forever basically because now it what it is configured to wake once every four hours and connect and pull down the total number of cases and it sleeps at less than two microamps so the battery is going to last forever so let me show you a couple other cool things here all right and on the trig boards wiki page i just want to show you what i've got here if you scroll down to the configurator section here and I right click open that in a new tab and then now I'm going to press and hold the wake button on the trig board we'll go ahead and let it do its update thing and then when it's done we're going to wait for the LED to flash on the trig board okay so now that the LED is flashing we can click connect we'll connect up to it from Google Chrome and this is pretty cool so this base code here for this e-paper display uses the same base firmware from the trig board so you still are able to go in and set up the Wi-Fi settings and everything here so it's not hard-coded like I would normally do so we can use this all here so you see I'm connected to an SSID you can test that out save and connect we see it's green we're good and then down here you'll see the timer wake time so it's set to minutes let me zoom in on that a little bit so you see it's set to minutes 240 so four hours we could set it faster if we wanted to we know once an hour and uh, saved both of those so it'll wake once every four hours now the other cool thing is that all of these other variables in here which I'll talk about in a future video when I do the base firmware code review uh, can be used for other things. You don't actually have to use these things for what I use them for in the base firmware. For example, here the trig board name set to Ohio. So now, again, you don't have to hard code your stated. We'll use this variable here as the search term from the CDC's website. So let's just test this out. I'll hit New York, save, and then I'm gonna go back up here. We'll click disconnect. And it's disconnected. I'm just going to force it to wake up. I'll just press the wake button. You see the LED turns blue. It's going to connect to the Wi-Fi network. It's going to go connect to the CDC site. It's going to parse through all that data and look only for the New York case total. So there it is, 90,000 cases. So quite a bit more than what it is here in Ohio. So anyway, let's now get into the code. I'll show you how this works. So we are going to connect that e-paper display up to the expansion pins, which is what I've got here. I just, uh, you know, put some uh, through hole headers on there and then these wires just plug right into that. So uh, pretty straightforward. So you've got obviously 3.3 volts in ground to the power uh, for the e-paper display. And then we're going to use the HSPY on the ESP32 for this. So you see SPY MOSI, we're not using MISO, but we are using clock, chip select, and then some of the other pins which are shown in the code. Let's jump over to that now. So right here you see DN, which is labeled on the e-paper display to 13, clock to 14, and then you know chip select CS to 15, DC to 33, 32, 39. So that's all pretty straightforward. And you just hook those wires straight up to the trig board's expansion pins. Now this was a copy and paste job from the base firmware like I mentioned. And the base firmware for TrigBoard is now here. You can go to this GitHub repo and all the versions for the IDE, the ESP32 core, and all of the libraries I'm using are here. So that's all pretty straightforward. And yeah, I finally got with the times and now I'm putting all my code up in uh, GitHub. And like I said, I will eventually go and make a video explaining how all of this works. And also, you know, like maybe you don't feel like going and building all of this. I think I'm going to export a binary for this because you really don't have to compile anything on your end, you know, because the variables here are not hard coded in. You can just use the configurator tool to change them. So if you wanted it to be exactly like this you could um, so I'll export a compiled binary and you can OTA so over the air program the trig board 
which I also need to make a video on. So all of this stuff, you might remember from the last video I did on this e-paper display, is right here. So this is all from uh, this library here, which is linked, so you could go, go check that out and install it. But um, all of that's added in, and it, that's pretty much the same as the, the last video I did on this. But now I'm just going to scroll down here and show you the changes to the base firmware. So actually, it's pretty straightforward. You know, it goes, it figures out what woke it up, it loads the configuration, it has to do some stuff with the RTC, goes and gets the battery voltage, and then it will connect to Wi-Fi, and then go to the new tab I created for this display, ePaper Update. And then all these other things down here are all commented out because we're no longer going to push to push over, push safer, you know, if this, then that, MQTT, UDP, you know, we're not doing any of that stuff in this. And this is just another pretty cool example you can do with the trade board. You know, you've got that timer, so, you know, the secret sauce to the trade board has always been that dry contact input to wake it up. But really, even the timer functionality is pretty powerful. So this is a, a good example of that where you're just, you just want to wake up every once in a while and do something. And in this case, we're pulling data down from the cloud but you could have a sensor hooked up to the trig board and send data out. So like I was talking about before, some kind of like weather station or data logger or whatever you wanted to do. So what we're doing though up here is just going, connecting to the Wi-Fi and then going to that ePaper update. So there's a new tab here for ePaper. And this whole thing here is the image, this little icon here, which I'll talk about in a second. And then scrolling all the way down, we have the ePaper update function which is just like the last video, we're just going to uh, clear out the screen, we're gonna connect up, we've got a function in there in case something goes wrong, which is right here to say could not update so that we know something happened. And then we go on through and connect and we pull down the JSON file and parse through that and we're looking for the state. But you see now, I'm just gonna kind of skip down here, you'll see that when we pull it down finally, what we're going to look for, instead of names hard-coded in here for Ohio to check against, we just look for config.trig name. So if it equals that, then we know what, you know, we hit and found our state, and it'll put that in for the display right down here. So cases reported in, I show it again just so we know, and then the cases. And then, you know, just because we're now battery-powered, I thought it'd be a good idea to also put in the battery voltage. So let's talk about this little icon here. And I did make a video a long time ago on how to display images, but I'll do that again for you quickly here. So this line of code right here is what actually draws it. And so this is the location, X, Y coordinates for you, where you want it to be. And then the size of the image, which is 200 by 200. And then of course it's going to be black. This is just a black and white display. So it can only really be in black unless the whole background was black and then you drew this white. You could do that too, I guess. So I found this icon here from iconfinder.com and I just like put in, you know, Corona or whatever and then found this. I thought that was kind of a cool one for the display. So found this, downloaded it, resized it for 200 by 200, exported it out as a bitmap I used Toy Viewer for that on a Mac. Then on Windows, I had to use a tool called, I think, LCD or Bitmap to LCD Converter. Let me show you that real quick. So yeah, it's this tool here called Image to LCD. And uh, I found this, um, I think, on the WaveShare website for these displays. But basically, you've got your bitmap in for here. See, it's showing 16 by 16, so you don't want that. So what we're going to do is type in... 200 by 200 and then reload it so now we have it set for 200 by 200 and then this is how it's set up it's going to be a c array horizontal scan ah, monochrome and then i think that's it and then you just save this and then you have your full image here so then you just take this copy and paste it into your code see i called it gi image test here but you'll copy and paste that whole thing into your code here. So set up exactly like this. I called it the COVID icon here. So then that's what you call down here when you finally draw it out right here. And it's so nice now working on an ESP32, especially for this kind of stuff, because you just have so much memory to work with. You know, if you remember back with uh, the last trig board, which was based on the ESP8266, 
I was running into so many memory issues just with the e-paper display projects. So now I don't even have to think about it. I don't even, I'm not even doing a page to update here. It's doing, you know, just a normal, regular update in here, so I don't have to get fancy with it. And even on the ESPD-266, I had to go into these libraries and tweak things to get them to work properly. Now, don't even have that issue. It just works perfectly right out of the box. So anyway, that is just an update to this project and just an example of another way to use the trig board. So that's all I've got. Thanks for watching.